Hi all, uh, quick one tonight. You probably heard loads or uh, you know, quite a lot of people advise you to put chemicals into your system. Um, you're probably thinking, oh, that, that could be tricky. And um, it's not the easiest thing, but um, here's a way that makes life quite a lot easier. Um, all I've got here is I've got a bottle of chemicals. I won't be adding that because that's the wrong one. This is just to show you. A hose pipe and a, um, a wrench. Find yourself your towel rail. Now you're looking for the type, it's got these caps on the top and I'll show you why. The other good thing is, it's in the bathroom. Next thing, get down and get both the valves closed, so close that one off. Get down, I've already obviously done this. Close this one off. Now, imagine we don't have this drain, so because you probably won't have it. So basically you're turning off both valves at both ends. Now. You may be concerned that possibly you haven't actually isolated the um, you haven't isolated the radiator. Well, check it. Get your bleed key and just open it up and check that it stops hissing. There we go. That's all good. Then, with your wrench, just unscrew that. Hang on, one-handed. Always fun. Just unscrew that, and then what we can do once that's out, okay, there you are, that's out. All you do then is you get your piece of hose pipe, and as you can imagine, being as you're in the bathroom, you've got um, uh, you've got a toilet to go to. You can put that in there like that, and what you do is you just start. I'm going to use a bucket because I've only got one hand, but. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a toilet close by. So what you do is you just siphon the water out. So I'm just going to push that down quite a long way. You quite often get a bit of water coming out because um, obviously you're, what you're doing is you're displacing the water with a hose, but you can suck, suck with that. What you do then, oh, fingers over the camera, just suck on the pipe, get that siphoned out like that. There we go. And the neat way, the neat thing about doing this, oh, that looks plenty. The neat thing about doing this is that you don't actually have to repressurize the system afterwards. Because what I'm going to do is I'm now going to put my chemical in. I'm not actually going to do it because this is an X300, it's a system cleaner, it doesn't need it. So I'm going to pour my chemical in here. I'm then going to Get a jug of water or anything else. Actually, in this case, I'm just going to pour the existing water straight back in. And you're going to top the radiator or the towel rail right back up to the top again so that then you don't have to repressurize your system. So let's just pour that in like that. There you go. All kinds of chunks, isn't there? Um, yeah, I should invest in a tripod, I think. Anyway, so you pull that back in and refill it, and then all you need to do is pop the lid back on, do it up. You want to watch, by the way, these little um, O-rings here can get a bit snagged and knack, sorry, a little bit snagged and knackered. If the O-ring goes bad, just a couple of wraps of PTFE, I'll, I'll help with that, just around there, or PTFE string. Okay, so that goes back in like that. Retighten the, um, retighten the, I'm not going to do that up now because obviously I'm going to refill the thing. Retighten your um, bleed nipple. Retighten your bleed nipple and then just gently open one of the valves like that so that it starts to fill and you can then check for leaks and if there is a leak you can then close it quickly off and there you go don't forget to reopen the second side and there we go there's a really quick and easy way <clears throat> to get chemicals into the system I will also show you uh, later on how to flush them out of the system not in the best possible way but in a way where you don't end up with airlocks and loads and loads of grief there we are guys hope that helps